So I'm Sharif Sharkawi. I'm a PhD student, one of the PhD students here in the Institute of Bioengineering. As well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a dentist, a uh, qualified dentist, and we are in Queen Mary University of London. So I, I practiced for three years in the clinic. I, I found it so difficult uh, with, the, with, with having the, uh, the, the same treatment for the patients. This treatment doesn't really replicate the structure of the teeth. So I found it that I need, to, at that age, I to go out from the clinic and not following the guidelines and go to the research to do the lab work and try to find novel treatments for, uh, for, uh, for the dental decay, for example. And that's why I came to Queen Mary because there's a lot of interest in that field here in Queen Mary when I, when I started my, my, my career. So simply we are trying to mimic nature. So we are, uh, by, we are inspired by nature. So we're trying to mimic how nature does things. So basically we have the protective layer on top of our teeth called dental enamel. It's, quite, it's very stiff, it's the stiffest material in our body and it's the hardest. And the way the nature does it is very, very interesting and we're trying to mimic that. So we, the method is called biomineralization. So the main challenge in biomineralization is that to have the structure built in a hierarchical manner and that uh, the cutting edge uh, research uh, have that as a major goal, but is not yet attained. So what we're trying to do is that to organize the crystals of, uh, of enamel uh, in the lab in, in a way to make it hierarchical organized and that will give it the stiffness and the mechanical properties needed for, for the teeth. So we're using a protein called elastin-like proteins. Uh, it's basically similar to the natural elastin that we have in our skin uh, and our tendons and our hearts. And we extract that and we actually uh, process that elastin in a way to make it uh, with the membranes. So we have a transparent membranes, highly cross-linked, and that we found that that membranes can actually have the capability to organize the crystals while we grow them in the lab in a way to make them hierarchic hierarchical. Okay, so here, here is the glove box where we fabricate the membranes and we actually solubilize the elastin protein and we drop cast it on top of a silicon substrate and we leave that overnight to dry. And once it's dry, we can actually have these transparent membranes. As you can see here, is this transparent membranes. We can actually put it in a solution similar to saliva, which is our spit in the mouth, full of calcium and phosphate. And we put it there just to mimic the, the, the environment of enam the saliva. And we put it in 37 degrees for incubator. And we leave that for eight days. And once we have the uh, mineralization uh, happen, we look at it under the microscope because we cannot look at it by eye. And as you can see here, this is the dental enamel at the bottom row. Uh, and this is the structure that we can grow in the lab. It looks very similar to dental enamel at multiple length scale. And this is the hierarchy that uh, we are aiming to achieve. And if you look at one of these structures that we grow on top of the membrane, they are very symmetrical, they're very circular, and they have like a center which they grow from. And if you look at that center in the cross section, you can actually see that it's kind of erupting from inside, we call that as a volcano, because once it erupts, it can actually populate bigger surfaces and we can actually populate that over millimeters. And if you have a thin membrane, thin enough, you can actually mineralize the whole thing through. And we are interested to apply that for uh, human teeth. So we have some human teeth to try that in vitro. So we can actually apply it on top of the dentine and we're trying to find ways to make it home-based as well. And as you can see here, you see the membrane on top of the dentine, which we can actually occlude and block any dentinal tubules. So these dentinal tubules, if they are blocked, that means that there's no sensitivity and no pain in our mouth. So we're aiming to, uh, to go for, for dental treatments, for like, for example, dental replacement for restorative materials in, in teeth, as well could have some application in bone with some defects in bone defects, uh, as well has orthopedic applications and dental applications. So in the future, I hope that that application could be the, ben the, the patient can benefit from that technology. So this is the main goal of my, my project. So hopefully in the next uh, five years, I would like to process, proceed with clinical trials and try to ap apply that to the patients and the benefits will come from that.